Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is a different kind of video because I'm going to try to sew. I got a sewing machine for Christmas. I have done two projects so far. I made cloth napkins, very sophisticated, you know, those straight lines. And I used some Hocus Pocus fabric because yeah, I saw the fabric. I know Halloween's over, but that's kind of like an all the, all the time thing for me. Second project was actually for a gathered waist skirt, which I felt like may have been a little bit ambitious before I got going, but I think I did pretty well. I actually watched a YouTube tutorial by Gertie and I found her advice and her step-by-step -step instructions so helpful. Um, it's a gathered waist skirt and it has a hook and eye clasp and a zipper and honestly I would have been way too intimidated to do any of that on my own and I probably would have avoided it for a long time so I'm kind of happy that I just got that over with. If you're new to sewing, um, you may not learn the things you need to learn in this video. I'm just gonna point that out now because yeah, uh, I'm learning. But I thought it'd be fun to kind of work on a project together because that's what I like to do. I like to make things and I like to do all the things, you know? I love to craft and bake and things. So sewing, that is the natural progression, is it not? I've sewn a couple things, you know, back in middle school and home ec. I think I made a pillow with some crazy SpongeBob SquarePants fabric, which would probably be something I would still make today, to be honest. But now here I am, I've made a skirt, made cloth napkins, and I've decided to try my first pattern with this store-bought pattern, I'll say, because the skirt, I mean, if you watch Gertie's video, she teaches you how to make your own pattern, which was super helpful. And I'll link below to that tutorial that I used because I loved it. I'll probably make it again. But this is my first ever store-bought pattern. I bought this at Joann Fabrics, Simplicity, and it is for these 1940s vintage aprons. I bake a lot, so I love having different aprons available to throw one on, and usually they're kind of geeky, inspired by uh, Slytherin House or R2D2, all of the fun geeky things that I enjoy. And for this one, of course, I decided to pick the hardest one, or what looks to be the hardest and most complicated one on the package. And instead of doing just plain things, I'm gonna try to make it Wonder Woman-esque, because if you haven't heard, Wonder Woman 1984 is finally going to be able to be watched on December 25th. Now, I think this movie was originally supposed to come out 2020 spring, and uh, way back when, a year ago, I was baking Wonder Woman pies, I was getting all excited, and then 2020 came, and COVID, and no movies, nothing at all. Now, we are getting to watch Wonder Woman 1984, starring Gal Gadot and Chris Pine on HBO Max on Christmas Day. So if you don't have HBO Max yet, make sure you have it for Christmas Day because I'm just so excited to have a new movie. So I'm anticipating I'll probably wanna be baking some more Wonder Woman things. So it only seems appropriate to maybe make a Wonder Woman apron. So that's what I'm gonna try. Again, this is the pattern I am trying. I'm going to try to kind of use different fabrics for different parts. I'm going to try to use a red fabric for the top half, for the middle waistband, I'm going to use a gold, and then a blue fabric for the skirt, as well as I did get some like white fabric applique thing, I don't know what it's called, to try to kind of, you know, have this look and style. I've never used a pattern, so this is gonna be interesting. Honestly, I think it kind of looks like a lot, so I hope I can read it and understand it. Making my own pattern was really easy and really understandable. Granted, like it was two big squares and a long rectangle for the waistband, so it wasn't complicated at all. But this, I feel like I'm gonna have to read it and understand where to cut and whatnot, so we're gonna see how this goes, okay? But this will be my third sewing project in recent days. So, fingers crossed it turns out. Starting out, I just cut out all of my pattern pieces so I was ready to go. Hi, yeah, here I am. I don't know if I'm supposed to like cut out the size I want or if I'm supposed to cut it out at the largest size and then pin it back because 
I might want to use it again or I might want to make it for someone who has different measurements than me. <sighs> I don't know. I'm just going to cut it out the largest size. Then I can always go back and trim if I need to or maybe like pin the, pin the pattern in place at a smaller size. Good? Okay. So I got, I think like two, two and a half yards of blue and red, which are the bottom and the top yard, yard and a half for the gold for the waistband. And whoop, I think I got too much fabric because it doesn't look like I need that much red. So I'm gonna have some extra. I almost ran out of fabric for my skirt. So that's why I erred on the side of caution. And uh, yeah, can one ever have too much fabric? Shoulder strap. Found it. I've cut out the two front red pieces and you can see it has a kind of a pretty gold glimmer. Now I'm working on the bottom blue pieces. So I decided to do both the front and back of the bottom skirt as well as the pocket in a kind of navy blue. And so we're gonna cut those out and then move on to the gold belt. I just realized that I didn't cut enough of the blue panels the skirt. So I need a couple more out. Hold, please. Good morning. Day two of the Wonder Woman apron sewing project. And we are about to sew today. And that is the risky part. <laughs> I took some time yesterday and I was reading through these pattern instruction guides. And I'm way, 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 way beginner phase. I, me personally. So I'm just curious though, like are patterns always kind of confusing? Maybe I just have some learning and some familiarity to gain. I mean, I was like reading this and I was like, I feel like there is an easier way to say it and the diagrams and the pictures, which I thought would be helpful. I was just, it was hard for me to interpret it. So I'm gonna follow the instructions as much as I can, but at the same time, like, I think I'm just gonna try to assemble the pieces that I already cut out into a picture that resembles the apron on the front of the package. And as long as it comes together, I'm fine if I didn't follow all the proper procedures because honestly, this is my third sewing project. I've mostly just sewn straight lines and my knowledge is a little limited. So please don't yell at me in the comments. You can tell me some pointers, but please know that I know that I'm not doing everything correctly. With right sides together, stitch upper edge of bib and bib facing, matching large dots, trim seam. Understitch by pressing bib facing and seam away from bib, stitching through facing and seam allowances close to seam. With wrong sides together, pin facing bib, machine face, raw edges together, three and four set front, stitch along stitch, stitching lines for one inch on either side of She has like a lot of words. I understand what it's telling me because Gertie, my trainer from YouTube, I don't know her. My husband keeps saying, oh, is that your friend? Do you know her? And I said, no, I just spent two plus hours on tutorials with her on YouTube that I feel like she is my, my Jedi master of sewing arts now. And so anyways, Gertie made it so easy. She explained everything. Now I'm on my own and I'm interpreting. So I can get what they're saying. There's some words that just like, technically I don't entirely know what it means. I think it said one time to baste something. I don't know what that means. I'm gonna go for it. Fingers crossed that, that we get somewhat of an apron at the end of it, right? Cause that's the goal. I'm also curious, like one of my newbie questions is like, if you're using, making a dress with multiple or apron, whatever it is, with multiple colors of fabric, do you have to change the thread color every time? Because for me, I'm using a gold fabric, a blue fabric, and a red fabric. That's a lot of uh, bobbin threading and just thread threading of the machine, which may sound simple, but that is a good 15 minute process for me each time, which is gonna make me better, I know. 
now for my first mistake of the day. I think I made a mistake, honestly, I'm not sure. I followed my interpretation of the instructions, which said, with the right sides together, stitch like the upper seam. And I interpret that to be like right sides together, meaning like put the right sides facing together. But then when I was reading the next step, like it just didn't make sense of like that the fabric was in the right position. And then when I did look at the chart, when it had the right sides together picture with the color and the shading, it like was kind of giving you the indication that it should have been the other way around. So I think I need to learn to read and understand what these patterns mean, which is fine. So I'm undoing my stitching and I'm gonna reverse it and try to do it the right way. Okay, here we go, take two. I think I undid the correct work, maybe. Honestly, no, I'm not sure if I was reading this wrong the whole time, but in a different way. There is a color-coded thing that says if it is shaded, it means that the pattern prints, printed side is down. If it is just white, the pattern printed side is up. And I interpreted that as my fabric, meaning like, the printed side, the pretty side, and the unprinted side. And I think it actually meant like the pattern printed side of the piece up. Or if it's down, like it should be flipped this way. I also feel like it's it, it's alluding to that I should be using interfacing, which I did use in my first skirt that I made with Gertie. It doesn't clearly tell you, at least maybe I skipped it, to like cut some out, where to put it, I'm going to take this stitch out again. I'm gonna put some interfacing down along the bottom just to let that be a little thicker around the seam part. Then sew it again how I originally had it. And I'm just gonna start going off the, and we're gonna see if we can get this apron to turn out. Thanks for sticking with me, folks. They say third time is a charm. And here we go. So I did add a little bit of interfacing on both sides. I put the right side facing both in the middle. I'm just gonna add a steam around here and I'm gonna be satisfied with it. Here we go. So I'm going off book. I think I'm going to press my seam and then I'm just gonna trim it down. I don't think I'm supposed to have a stitch on the outside, but I think I'm gonna stitch it on the outside just to keep it in place a little bit so that it doesn't bunch up like that. Proceeding on with my probably incorrect instructions, I'm going to stitch up the sides on each side. It's on the outer part, but the straps are going to cover it up, I think. So I sewed the front facing straps on. Now I'm just going to fold this and press the seam on the inside. So I'm going to try to secure the ruffle now. Which this step is optional, I did choose the fancier pattern. And I bought about two yards of this already kind of finished, scalloped edged, I don't know, ruffle lace. It's not entirely like straight, like it kind of bunches like that, but I'm thinking maybe that'll just help with the curved edge. Along each of my front straps, I'm just gonna pin this and sew it and see how it turns out. Which is the theme of the day, apparently. Just got done doing the lace on the second strap and I sewed it beautifully. Straightest lines you've ever seen. Of course, I was feeling pretty confident. And then I realized that I sewed the wrong sides together and the seams were showing on the outside. So, wouldn't you know, this girl thought that she never would need to buy a seam ripper. So I don't have one. I had to cut the strings out the longest stitch I've made so far. I'm going to repin it and re -sew it. So what's our mistake counter up to now? That's a really good question because we've got another mistake, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yes, yes. So. 
And moving on to the middle piece, which I'm doing the gold fabric. To be fair, I followed part of the directions. It says yoke and tie and cut two on fold. Now I didn't realize what that meant. When I was looking in the pictures, I realized the middle piece that is like this triangular piece, I've gotten two halves. And in the picture, there is definitely no seam, no stitching right there. The bad news is that I don't have enough fabric to recut it. The good news is, is that we can roll with these punches. I am just going to stitch it down the middle and hope that it doesn't look too awkward or bulky. But yeah, we're just, we're learning a lot of things today. Okay, so I did my seam on the inside. I don't think it looks that bad. So now I'm gonna pin this to the top piece. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm unpinning my pattern piece from my blue fabric. And wouldn't you know, it did say to cut one front and two back. And it was like three pieces, kind of odd. And then, uh, yeah, uh, you know what I just saw? Please add a checker box to the mistakes column because apron front, cut one. Yes, I did. Oh no. Cut one on fold. Which basically means, I think, cut it so that there's two of them side by side. Luckily, I think I have enough blue fabric, so I might actually be able to cut this one out again. I've got my three skirt panels now, the double fold, cut on fold front piece, and the two back sides pinned, and I'm just going to do some long stitches down the side right now. Surprise, surprise, I don't know how to sew on pockets, but I'm going to do it my own way. So I folded the piece that is for the pocket in half with the pattern side facing out and I just ironed along the fold to give it kind of a sharp edge. Then I pinned it. I'm gonna go around and just stitch around the edging to use it as a guide. And I'm just gonna pin it in place and then do another outer stitch around it because I don't know how to attach it to my skirt. I don't know if I'm supposed to pull it out from the inside, different weird things. So that's my approach. My curves might have been a little rough. I'm going to now take this, take the pins out, and actually just pin it to the skirt once we have the skirt because I haven't made the skirt yet. So I took a dinner break, I took a Sherlock Holmes break, I watched a movie, and now I am just trimming the um, edge that I already stitched, and then I'm just using my new pinking shears, which I think these are what these are called, just to trim off the excess fabric and help them to not shred as much. And then I'm gonna pin this over and do one more stitch just to have a clean edge. So to gather the skirt at the waistband, I'm going to do the same trick that I did with my other gathered skirt from the tutorial with Gertie, and what she showed to do was to use, what is this called? Dental floss. Couldn't think of it. It's been a long day. Basically, we're just going to pull out a really long piece shoot. This is all I have. I'm going to have to go search in more. But you're going to need a lot of dental floss and basically we're going to, at the top of our edge, we're going to hold it down and we're going to do a zigzag stitch across it. You don't ever want to stitch on the, the dental floss itself. Then once we have that, we can just pull it and bunch it and gather it and then it'll be a lot easier to do the gathering. So I'm all for that. I'm going to try to do it once more. Okay, now for the satisfying part. So you just grab your excess dental floss and you pull, which is super nice. I guess this is the only way I've done it. Um, and you just work your way in from both sides. Nice, nice, nice. 
and just play with it till you get the spacing to your liking. And then I'm gonna pin this top part to the gold waistband and we are on our way into the home stretch. All right, I've got my bunched gathered skirt top to the gold piece here and I'm going to go ahead and stitch it. I'm gonna do a wider inseam than normal just because I don't want my skirt to be super, super long and I think I probably have some extra. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this slowly. And while I'm working on the skirt, I figured I might as well sew in that pocket now. So I'm almost done with my Wonder Woman apron, day three. I just have left to kind of clean up some of the edges. I need to sew them down just so it's a clean seam. I didn't really feel like the instructions in the template told me to do that. I could have missed it. And honestly, I'm just kind of doing my own thing at this point, which is fine. So I'm gonna clean up those around the waistband. Also, I need to finish the straps. And I think that's it. So final couple steps and then Wonder Woman apron reveal. So I'm on the final step of the apron, just pinning the straps in place. On that pattern, they actually have the straps crisscrossing in the back. And I just felt like that could be challenging to get into because you have to head through the right holes in your arms. So I'm just going to have them go straight back and secure them on each side of the gold waistband so that I can just like put my arms in and then tie it. I just feel like that'll be easiest in and out. So I just did a rough job of trying it on and pinning it where I want. Now I'm just gonna secure these with a couple lines of stitching just to make sure that they look nice there too. And that's it. Oh, I did change my thread color for ideal aesthetic. I feel like I'm always changing the thread color. That's okay, I'm gonna do it. Practice is never a bad thing. Yes. Okay, final stitching. Here we go. apron. I'm pretty proud of it. I'm impressed. I use the template, the, um, oh gosh, what do you even call them? Pattern as much as I could, but some of the things didn't really make sense to me or compute. It did not compute. So I just kind of went off book a little bit and made it work. I think I did. Um, I really like the colors and I like kind of the vintage vibes with the eyelet lace. I like how the straps show in the back. Honestly, I like it. I mean, I think there are things that I will continue to get better on. One of them being how it looks underneath. I tried to make it as tidy as I could, but honestly, there's a lot of room for improvement there. I learned a lot of things too. Definitely check to make sure your paces are pinned correctly together before sewing, even if you think the instructions make sense and you did it accordingly, because we all know my error counter. Yeah. It went up a couple times. I definitely need to get maybe a stitch remover, although my manicure scissors seem to work really well for the times that I had to kind of backtrack. I had a lot of fun doing it. I'm excited learning to sew. It's kind of just like a new craft DIY that I can do, kind of break up my baking and you know some of the other DIYs that I do. So really excited to continue to learn this. If you have harsh criticisms of how I did any of it, please know that I know. I am not an expert. And really, this isn't even a tutorial. This is just me learning to sew, making it geeky. I can't wait to watch Wonder Woman 1984 coming out on Christmas Day. And I will for sure, hopefully, be making some Wonder Woman inspired baked goods, which I will be wearing my new Wonder Woman apron. So I'm excited to check that out and also to get into the kitchen and make some Wonder Woman 1984 treats.